Hypothyroidism affects 5% of general population, with further estimation of 5% being underdiagnosed. Over 99% of people said to be affected by primary hypothyroidism. Today we have Dr. Shervey with us. Thank you. So, Doctor, when we talk about thyroid, uh, it's talked less, but it's being affected a lot of people these days. Yes. So let's start with what is a thyroid gland? Okay. What is a thyroid, and how does it affect? Okay. First of all, thank you for having me on the show uh, again. And yes, like you rightly took up, the topic is vast, and there have been majority of the population affected, yet underdiagnosed or non-diagnosed uh, of thyroid. And there are a lot of complications related to thyroid disease which most of uh, us do not know about. We tend to be ignorant. We do not test very frequently, and that is the reason uh, a lot of complications arise uh, with just either hypothyroidism or hypothyroidism. So, coming back to the question, thyroid uh, is nothing but a disorder of uh, hormones. Thyroid gland, uh, which is uh, placed a gland which is placed um, on the neck, uh, it secretes hormones uh, called T3 and T4. There are two types of uh, hormones that a thyroid gland secretes. Uh, the deficiency or over secretion of these hormones is what uh, causes thyroid disorders or thyroid diseases, like we say. So, when we talk about hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, so we have two types of thyroidism. How do we classify them? Right, right. So like I said, there are two types, two different types of hormones that are secreted by the thyroid gland. Uh, the over secretion of these hormones is called hyperthyroidism, that is when the level of our T3 and T4 in our blood increases or the secretion increases. And the level of TSH, which is another hormone released by the thyroid gland, thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, it reduces. So. Uh, Overall, it is either the over secretion or under secretion. Depending upon the uh, over secretion, it is called hyperthyroidism. If it is an under secretion, it is called hypothyroidism. Okay, so when we talk about thyroid and uh, what kind of uh, changes or what kind of changes it creates into someone's body and you can identify them, what are the kind of symptoms? If right. You talk Right, right. So uh, let's start with hypothyroidism. Okay. For instance, if you have, if one has, if an individual has hypothyroidism, that means under secretion of thyroid hormones. Uh, so thyroid, because it is responsible for our metabolism, for our cholesterol levels in the body to be controlled, it is also responsible for our uh, cardiac, uh, in fact, heart-related uh, uh, well-being. So all of these symptoms, uh, the deficiency of hormones can cause all of these symptoms to come up. So one can have severe weight gain in hypothyroidism, one can have extreme lethargy or sleepiness or drowsiness. Uh, one can, so in females we also see regular menstrual cycles related to uh, hypothyroidism. And in severe cases one, where one's heart may be affected, we also see some uh, heart related complications like it could be a cardiac failure or there could be some problem in the regular rhythm of the heart. Uh, coming to hyperthyroidism which is the over secretion of these hormones, in this we see that because of the excessive secretion there is over stimulation of everything and because there is an over stimulation we see symptoms like palpitations or sweating, profuse sweating, uh, weight loss, in fact not weight gain and weight loss or loose motions or uh, general weakness, malaise, some uh, uh, difficulty in performing daily tasks due to this weakness. Again, in hyperthyroidism, there can be, in severe cases, there can be uh, paralysis, there can be heart-related complications like arrhythmias. Okay, so when we talk about thyroid, uh, thyroid are tend to be said when, you know, thyroid what crosses the mind generally uh, the thing which crosses the mind is females yeah. but then thyroid has been affecting men also yes. so uh, how you know how 
frequently does a male can also have a right. thyroid. Right. Does it like depend upon the genders or it's, it's it can be done with anybody? Okay, okay. So thyroid most commonly when it is an autoimmune disease, that means when your thyroid uh, hormones uh, respond to auto antibodies that develop into your body. Uh, autoimmune diseases are they're most likely genetic, that means they're transmitted from one generation to the other. However, it is very commonly seen with females mm -hmm. and not as common in males. But whenever we see it in males, most of the times it is uh, there is a genetic uh, predisposition, there is some family member who is involved. However, the, the likelihood of a female developing it in the family is more than that of a male. But there is no uh, there is no symptomatic difference in the two if a male is affected or a female is affected. Uh, the symptoms more or less remain the same. So does thyroid anyway connect to PCOD or PCOS? Sometimes I think people are like denoting these three things together that I have a PCOD and thyroid, maybe I have a PCOD and I might get thyroid also, does it? Are, are these two things linked together? Because I think this is a thing right, which is right. questionable. So a lot of a lot of myths revolve around PCOS, and uh, a lot of myths revolve at the same time about thyroid. People have a lot of uh, uh, knowledge coming in from different sources. However, PCOS is completely a, a, a hormone disbalance of uh, our reproductive hormones, which is a different uh, entity altogether. But there is some link between the secretion of estrogen, maybe normal, abnormal, uh, which affects somewhere affects the thyroid metabolism as well. So not necessarily that they are interlinked, but incidentally, uh, there are always some percentage can always present with hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism and develop PCOS or vice versa. Okay. Yeah. So when we talk about thyroid, or uh, thyroid as we talked that it is generally in females then uh, thyroid does thyroid anyway affects the pregnancy or somebody who's already pregnant or pregnant women with thyroid does it complicates the pregnancy uh, you know situation yes. within the women yes so it's a very important question and i i really like to enlighten on this uh, because thyroid uh, is a very important hormone for our uh, brain development so as a child the, the when the child is just growing inside the mother's womb, the child is not able to, the fetus is not able to produce its own thyroid in the initial few weeks of pregnancy and hence is totally dependent on the uh, thyroid of the mother. Mm. So the thyroid levels in the mother who is planning to conceive or who has already conceived really need to be in check just to make sure that the baby does not develop any thyroid deficiency mm. and hence does not develop any uh, Defects which involve the well-being of the brain or uh, IQ later on, the IQ of uh, the child. And also because the thyroid is, again like I said, that estrogen plays an important role in also the metabolism of thyroid. So in pregnancy we see that there is, there is a fluctuation in the estrogen, there is more estrogen and progesterone that is secreting. Thyroid hormones somehow become deficient. So. In pregnancy, we have to replace the thyroid in most of the cases and the level of thyroid, normal thyroid in pregnancy is different than for a non-pregnant female. Okay, so uh, when we talk about thyroid, uh, so the female, uh, as we talked, that pregnant women with thyroid might have complications. So is it with hyperthyroidism or the hypothyroidism? Right. So in either cases, even if it is hypothyroidism, particularly if it is hypothyroidism, like I said, the brain development of the child can, can get affected. And also in hyperthyroidism, if the, the disease is not controlled, if it is uh, way above uh, range than the normal range, there are chances of miscarriages, there are chances that like, there can be pregnancy losses or there can be difficulty in conception or conceiving uh, pregnancy. And hence, we always recommend for everyone who is planning pregnancy to check their thyroids even before they start planning their uh, pregnancy. As you mentioned about the range, so what is the range which a particular person should see for a hyper and a hypothyroid? Okay, so there are different essays that we use, there are different uh, measuring uh, criteria that we use. In pregnant female per se, when we want uh, the patient to uh, be healthy, to say that you can conceive without having any problems, the TSH upper limit is always considered as 2.5. 2.5 million international units per ml. 
and for an, an, an individual who is not pregnant we call a level of 5 of TSH uh, to be normal whereas in hyperthyroidism this is for hypothyroidism whereas in hyperthyroidism we have a TSH level of sometimes less than 0.1 or 0.2 or it can be further reduced further lower lower than that and uh, in that case we consider this as hyperthyroidism okay. so when we talk about uh, thyroid what can be the causes for uh, you know create somebody having thyroid what can be the normal causes for somebody who's uh, having thyroid right right so like i said that thyroid is the most common uh, common causes an autoimmune disease that means there are some antibodies which are forming inside the body which break the normal cells of thyroid producing hormones and hence we in layman's language and hence we are deficient on the on the thyroid hormone. That is one of the common causes for hyper, which we call as Graves disease, or for hypothyroidism, which is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So there are two different types of thyroid, either a Hashimoto's or a Graves. Now if it is not an autoimmune, then there are also certain drugs that can cause hypo or hyperthyroidism. Uh, there is also uh, radiation, a lot of times a lot of cancer patients have to undergo neck radiations, therapies, radiotherapies mm -hmm. which can uh, cause hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. Also there can be various surgeries that involve the neck or can involve uh, thyroid. So once if there is any surgery which requires removal of the thyroid, in that case you can be hypothyroid. So other than autoimmunity, there, there are drugs, there are uh, like like we discussed there's radiation there are uh, certain now certain environmental factors are also supposed to be responsible for changes in the thyroid okay so when we talk about thyroid what uh, treatments do you recommend people with either hyper or a hypothyroidism what kind of treatments should they undergo right right so starting with hypothyroidism like we discussed that it is nothing but a deficiency of thyroid hormones and in that case, the, the, the disease needs to be replaced with thyroid hormones. So what we prescribe, we prescribe normally is external thyroid hormones. And uh, that is what hypothyroidism means. That means we give tablets which contain uh, thyroid hormones and that is how we replace the deficiency in thyroid, of thyroid hormones in them. Whereas in hyperthyroidism, we give blocking agents which cer certainly block the excess thyroid hormones that are being produced. So yeah, that is about it. But other than that, suppose if somebody develops a ca cancer or a nodule or a tumor in the thyroid, then of course surgery is, is one of the options. Also, a lot of times we have to use uh, iodine, mm -hmm. iodine as a therapy mm -hmm. to control thyroid. Other than that, radiation therapy also is one of the uh, options for either a tumor or nodules uh, in the thyroid. So we talked about uh, treatments. So normally uh, people want to know very first thing is, is a thyroid treatable and when we're talking about treatments, is it completely avoidable like somebody who's having thyroid, either we talk about hyper or hypo, is it completely uh, treatable where, you know, after taking medicines and a lot of treatments, it's completely vanished inside the body for person. Maybe it can come back, but for the time being, if they're controlled under the medicines and right. hormones, is right. it like can somebody be free out of thyroid? Okay, okay. So again, this is a very common question that a lot of patients are asked to. Thyroid hormone, if it is, uh, if it's a deficiency or a hypersecretion related to autoimmune disorders, that means your uh, body somehow is not uh, able to either produce it or producing it too much and not able to control it. In either cases, uh, it needs to be treated. It definitely needs to be treated. However. It may depend that a patient can be euthyroid. Euthyroid meaning the thyroid levels can be normal with treatment. But we have seen that after some time we stop the treatment despite the thyroid levels being normal, uh, you can you come back tend to relapse with the disease and you come back with higher levels of thyroid or maybe lower levels of thyroid and hypothyroidism in either cases. So monitoring and regular checkup of thyroid is very important. Even if we want to be medicine free, I would not certainly say that we could be disease free. Mm -hmm. This is in the case of autoimmune uh, thyroiditis. Mm -hmm. But however, if it is a cancer or a tumor or a nodule, like I said, surgical uh, treatments can, can be long lasting. So when we talk about uh, thyroid in particular, uh, 
if somebody is not taking it seriously or being ignorant about the reports of thyroid how does it affect uh, the individual person untreated thyroid how does it affect the individual person okay so if the thyroid is not treated for a long time or the symptoms are not uh, assessed or one does not know what exactly could be the symptom or this could be thyroid related uh, so like in hypothyroidism for instance we have people coming with severe weight gain yeah. people have a, a lot of swelling on the face they have swelling on the feet yeah. and if it gets too severe we have seen that it also causes some swelling in the neck yeah. hence can cause some swelling on the vocal cords so one can have a husky voice one can have due to excessive weight one can have uh, problems like uh, uh, you know other problems of obesity like exertional breathlessness yeah. or like i said in severe cases it affects the heart Mm. so when it affects the heart the heart can be severe enough that it can even go into failure mm. uh, where is it hypothyroidism in hypothyroidism like i said that because uh, a lot of people tend to lose weight mm. very quickly despite them not trying to lose weight mm. or they get uh, excessive tremors and shivering sometimes it can be so uh, so serious that patients also develop some paralysis some periodic paralysis which can be transient which gets recovered immediately once we give them treatment but yes so thyroid stop which we call is uh, one of the complications of uh, hypothyroidism and that is why we need to treat so when we talk about diets every particular uh, disease or every particular disorder has a different kind of a diet which affects a person in a healthy way yeah. so when we talk about hyper and a hypothyroidism what are the kind of food supplements or food diets you would recommend for the people if including the medicines and the treatment they are yeah. taking but there are some types of foods which are allowed which are avoided you know a lot of things what do you suggest Uh, right so a lot of myths again revolve uh, related to the diet which is uh, which is to be taken in thyroid uh, but there are not many foods that need to be really avoided or put off the plate for instance they say that uh, we we ask our patients normally to avoid cruciferous foods or we ask them to avoid soya bean mm -hmm. however we never consume cruciferous like we do not consume too much of cauliflower or mm -hmm. kale or you know turnips mm -hmm. in excess that it will somehow hamper the metabolism of thyroid when we take it in such smaller quantities like in the form of a vegetable or salad i we have not seen any direct effect on the metabolism of the thyroid but there it is better that when the patient is not having a controlled level of thyroid hormones it is advisable that they try to avoid these foods as long as their thyroid is not controlled once it is controlled they can of course have everything in moderation uh, there is also a myth revolving about gluten in thyroid because uh, yeah because gluten uh, gluten allergy or celiac disease what we call is considered another autoimmune disease and a lot of times other autoimmune diseases like type 1 diabetes or thyroid or celiac diseases they come together so only when they are together like if one has gluten allergy then definitely you need to avoid gluten but otherwise patients with only hypothyroidism do not need to avoid gluten okay yeah so when we talk about the healthy lifestyle or uh, somebody who is having hyper thyroidism or hypo what kind of uh, healthy lifestyle as in in the way of exercising and you know lot of things people who tend to uh, lose lot of weight due to thyroid they think that exercises are not what is meant for them and somebody who is already gaining weight because of the thyroid thinks that now they are on the medicines uh, exercises would no good use because now you are right. being treated right. Right. how does uh, exercise working out or you know the active help uh, to reduce the thyroid Okay, so uh, again, there is no direct link of uh, exercise uh, affecting or maybe reducing thyroid diseases. But uh, exercise is important in hypothyroid patients because it always helps. In, in the metabolism is generally slower in mm. such in such individuals, so they always find it difficult to lose weight. But the weight gain could be quicker than expected. Mm. So all the more for them, it is uh, good to exercise and keep their weight in check, just so that uh, the, the the thyroid doses do not need to be increased uh, depending on their weight. But uh, in hyperthyroidism, a lot of times the like I said, there is hyperactivity of the heart. Mm. Uh, there are 
there is the patients tend to lose weight so for them muscle building should be one of the key factors they should always focus on uh, proteins in their diet they should focus on muscle building because again thyroid per se in hyperthyroidism they tend to lose their muscle mass or tend to be weaker uh, and again bone as far as the bone health is concerned we always say to all our thyroid patients that it is important for them to take care of their uh, bone health and the best way to take care of uh, your bones is by starting to exercise and do some strength training mm. so no link of thyroid getting away with exercise but yes the addition of exercise in their lifestyle definitely helps in their prognosis and definitely helps in the treatment of thyroid thyroid like as we all know is one of the commonest uh, disorders that we, that are found and especially in women uh, although the awareness about thyroid or the symptoms that are related to thyroid th thyroid are not known by many of us and i think this is a good medium for you all to know what exactly how exactly thyroid works what exactly it does to us and hence i think if we have any of the symptoms or we feel that we our thyroid needs to be checked we should see an expert thank you